Shaz here. And I'm Susie. <laughs> and we're going to be talking to Susie today about women in politics mm. and all the challenges you face and all the fun you have as well. Oh yeah, there is fun. Yeah, just to reassure you. <laughs> Glad to hear it. The glamour of an AM, so... <laughs> How has yes. it been a woman in Welsh politics, Susie? But you know, that's a, that is a massive question. It is, it, it is. Because it is. Um, every woman's going to have a different experience, but I'm guessing you, you want to know about the things that we, that we have yes. as common experiences, yeah. I suppose. Uh, I think, to be fair, once you get to see into the Assembly, someone like the Assembly, mm -hmm. it genuinely doesn't matter. When mm -hmm. people say that the Assembly has got a, a reputation for, for fairness and equality, you know, they, they really are very good at it, both from the government perspective and the Assembly itself, the, the Commission staff, the parliamentary services. I, I, I've never been anywhere where they're so on top of diversity mm -hmm. and equality okay. matters. I mean, we came back and we, we actually had our first gender neutral toilet that was put in the other day. That and I know that okay. sounds a little bit flippant, but it shows how how far at the forefront they are. And, you know, I think other public bodies, but certainly other parliaments maybe, could look at us and, and see how good we are at that. Mm -hmm. So um, once I'm in the cosy confines yeah. of the Assembly, your question is almost meaningless it really is yeah. but you know back out in the real life end of things yeah yeah, it is different uh, I mean what I'd say in the sort of oh, 15 years I've been active in politics I've, I've seen a difference uh, in terms of how people treat you as a woman that has changed a lot certainly in that okay. conscious oh and what does your husband think of it kind of question oh, that, that, oh, no, wow. that's kind of gone right okay. I don't know whether it's because they can see yeah. the steely glint in my eye. Was it like that at the beginning then, when you first started? N not an awful lot, I have to be fair. And it was, you know, gentlemen of a certain generation, shall I say. Oh, no. um, and when I was asked that, I said, I don't you know, what did your husband think of you doing this? And I just said, I don't know, I haven't asked him. And I thought, that, 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 <laughs> shut up a bit. Then. That's a good answer, actually. I think what we're keen to know as well is there's been a lot of sort of sexism that we, Ellen and I have picked yeah. up on in the Welsh Assembly. We've heard as things outside, like in, cheap yeah. date... And we've heard things like concubine and this harem. And it seems to be this language that we're hearing from certainly some assembly members from UKIP. And we've heard it recently from Mike Hedges as well. And we, as women, as young women, we feel uncomfortable hearing that. And it's put us both off politics a little bit in that sense when we're hearing men mm. say that. And we were just wondering how you feel about that. Uh, well, I think that... That we, I know that I know the occasions you're talking about, but mm. it, it, to be quite honest, I think we're talking about two different types of thing here. Um, when Neil Hamilton made his, uh, should we say, his unfortunate remarks, uh, 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 referring to yeah. Kirsty Williams and Leanne Wood, I mean, there, there, was, a, there was this collective wince, which then has he continued to, into a, a, a collective anger. And I'm, uh, yeah. th I mean, there's never been a place in the assembly for. Um, ill-guarded references like that because it suggests that he thinks it's okay to say those things out loud. Yes. Um, I think he's learned a very quick lesson there. I mean, the difficult question for me now is when is he going to stop thinking that? Because it's so easy to do the sort of, oh, you women have got no sense of humour thing, but that just wasn't funny. Now, with Mike Hedges, I think we had something different there because, you know, I've known Mike a while and mm -hmm. I would never pin, put him in the same pigeonhole and say, oh, you're a sexist. But I suppose what we see with that comment was something that is still around, and this is this unconscious, yes. set casual sexism. Of course, yeah. Well, I mean, where Mike would never in a million years have thought of himself in that way. Yeah. Uh, and even though I suppose he was trying to be a quip and, you know, trying to bring colour to a debate or whatever, a question, whatever it was, like, ah, that means that you still think that even that was okay. Mm. Um, do you think we're getting sort of maybe less tolerant of it now that society notices it more and maybe, you know, maybe the level is the same as it always has been? Mm. Um, I, I think there's a genuine sea change. You're finding more and more people just realise, you know, 20 years ago we were talking about in racist terms that would just completely yeah. shock you now and it's not because we've run out of humour and wit and lightness of touch and, and uh, uh, you know, the ability to laugh at things. But there are certain things that we just don't find funny anymore. So yeah. I think it's as simple as that. And that's only because we do think differently. And, you know, even in, when we're talking about the two gentlemen, we talk, oh, two men we were talking about it just now, you know, they're not in their 20s. Uh, so I'm not forgiving them, but I'm kind of understanding it a bit better. Mm. I mean, if my own son's dead talking that way, well, I, I perhaps get a Every little old-fashioned with my, uh, <laughs> my mothering techniques. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> So, Susie, to be a little bit cheeky there, yeah. um, I wrote this article recently called The Independent, talking about sexism in Wales, and I did mention the Welsh Conservatives, because as a woman, as somebody that was part of 
the Welsh Conservative Party, I did find it really uncomfortable that in the history of Parliament that we've never seen a woman elected as an MP from the Conservatives, which I just think is phenomenally sexist. I mean, what is going on there? Well, it's, it's a fair observation. Um, I think what I, I think I have to put some defence in here because um, uh, before I became an assembly member, I, I, I stood twice in Brecon and Radnorshire, which was considered a target seat in both times. Now I didn't win that, so you may want to say something about the sexism of voters on that. I genuinely, I don't think it was that. Mm. Um, but it, it wouldn't be entirely fair to say that we don't get um, directed towards winnable seats if we possibly can. Um, I think in the last general election that was less the case, but of course. It's the local association that chooses the candidate. It's 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 not centrally decided. Um, and while we've been doing pretty well, I think actually until very recently, I don't know whether it was just the luck of the draw. There weren't that many women at the time, or whether there's a, a, a case for saying we don't talent spot well enough in particular areas. Uh, you know, I I think there's probably an element of that as well. Yeah. So, <laughs> can you? I'm thinking about sort of maybe stories that you might oh, have yeah. in your time in politics. Oh, can I tell a little bit? Embarrassing or hilarious? I oh, well, I, um, <laughs> embarrassing, embarrassing and hilarious. I was going to say, very big and bold, aren't they? Not this one. Well, my <laughs> personal favourite, and of course, I'm, this might have to be nice and sexist now, was the campaigning in a different constituency a while ago um, in Carmarthenshire, uh, in a very remote village, really, even by a rural area, not the knock at the door. Mm. I'm just here to tell you what I love you. I mean, if I, I'm not very tall, you can't tell that because it's in town. No, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong place. Um, but uh, when I knock the doors in older houses, sometimes they're up some stairs. Right. So there's me going knock, knock, knock on the door like this. And my favourite day was the day that the most handsome man I've ever seen Ooh, opened one seen. of those Your doors. Your husband, obviously. Oh. Yeah. Brilliant. Not him I love. He's not necessarily that uh, uh, um Anyway, this absolutely gorgeous man. Just opens the door. In Carmarthen. In Carmarthen. <laughs> in the teeniest, tiniest towel ever. And of course, me being short and me being up some stairs. I mean, oh. uh, 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 and he. But the, the thing is, he knew I was embarrassed. I think he also knew I was kind of looking at his back. <laughs> and so, um, but actually, I'm not the first. I mean, that's happened to lots of people. It's going all a bit Fifty Shades here. So no, I love it. But you know, I've, I've spoken to actually a friend of mine. Maybe women can. Well, who sort of you know, <laughs> knocked on windows and found people down looking on, you know, jumping about on carpets and doing oh. things that we can't talk about oh. today. Um, Brilliant. I mean, that was fascinating. The but, highs and lows of campaigning. Yeah. But in terms of dignity, because you know, we all think really highly of ourselves, don't we, as politicians? Would <laughs> actually, my, I think it's my first or second week in assembly. And there's a rule in the assembly, well, not a rule, a convention, that when if, if somebody is speaking, they tend to start. Mm -hmm. And then if you're <laughs> sitting next to them, you put down what you're doing and you look fascinated. Yeah. Uh, and when I, in the first weeks uh, that I was in the assembly, I, I was seated next to Antoinette Sandbach. Now I don't know if you, uh, oh, oh, yes. yeah, I think you, oh, yes. but you know her. No, mm, I'm yes. four foot eleven, and she's actually four foot and a half yes. taller than I am. Yes. Wow. <laughs> so, so we always look a bit silly sitting next to each other, anyway. But I don't know what happened. Um, I think I think my, my phone must have gone off or something, and that's not allowed in the chamber. Wow. So I leaned down to grab my bag. Now, because I'm short, my feet don't touch the floor. They are inside or in for <laughs> And as a result, my chair on wheels goes flying back and bangs the wall and I fall to the floor. Oh, no! And at the very moment, the downtown outside sandbar, she said, is called by the Llywydd to stand up for five minutes and make whatever speech she wants to make. So she's all there up in the sky talking and I'm down here on the floor <laughs> no. hiding under the, under the desk. Because I, if I go, I will be like a muppet coming up. Be on camera behind them. So I should just sit there under the desk for the whole speech. And I had Mohammed Ashka the other side of me and he thought I died. Who <laughs> needs ambulance? Do you need, do you need an ambulance? Do you need an ambulance? Shut up. Go away. So there we are. That's, that's what you pay me all that money for. That's got to be on set of TV. It is. It's fantastic. Well, we need to be out too. Yeah, absolutely. But we'll ask you one final question. Oh, yeah. Um, well, we'll end it on a, a more of, a, a, final more thought, of, a, more yeah. of a, a serious note, I guess. Um, what advice would you give to any women wanting yes. to get into politics, looking, yeah. looking at the political landscape, thinking, oh, is it for me? There's so many men. What advice would you give to young women thinking, right, I'd, I'd like to make a difference in my community and perhaps 
stand for election, be the council, assembly, parliament. Actually, but that last point's an important one. It's not yeah. all about being the MP. Mm. Uh, yeah. Consider standing at any at any uh, level, if you like. I think what I would what I'd start off by saying is be, be sure you know what why you're doing it. Because don't do it for the glamour, don't do it for the fame, don't do it for the money. <laughs> None of this matters because if you don't like people. It's going to really grind you down because you are on demand 24-7. Now, don't get put off by that. Don't get put off by that. Because the one thing I can say, having you know been at it a while and taken a while to get there, not instant, you know, overnight success, is, my God, it's worth it. Because not only do you get to meet people that you would never have a chance of meeting elsewhere, there are days when you actually get it right and you, and you do help somebody. Now, whether that's through getting an amendment into a piece of legislation that no one will see, but you know, you perhaps, yeah. you, maybe you've protected somebody's rights. They, they won't know you've done it, but you know you've done it, and that's yeah. important. Or with a constituent, you, you may sort their case out for them, and you may never see them again, and they may not vote for you, that doesn't actually matter. Think, yeah, actually, they're always worth doing that. Yeah. But you have to be able to put up with a lot of frustration in between. Oh, that's quite yeah. uplifting, really. That is lovely. It really, but it does. Yeah. It, you can do it. Yeah, um, absolutely. Well, thank you so important. much, yeah. Susie. We've yeah, had so much you. fun. And we'd we've love to have a nice day with you. We've nearly finished, so we're going <laughs> to go off and enjoy these. And then we hope you enjoy our video. Thanks very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Enjoyed it.